Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Mathieu Muller, and I work for Unity, and I'm field engineer and film specialist. And today, um, my talk is Unity for Film, a walkthrough, but we have a last minute change because it's going to be a run through. Um, I decided to, to show you how to use Unity to make a film, to try, it's my own challenge, to try to make a music video starting from scratch in 30 minutes. Uh, I have to tell you that I've never done it before uh, under 40 minutes, so I will try to do it today. Um, so, let's go. This is everything I'm going to use today, and let's go. So, <laughs> um, so we will start from scratch. Um, this is a new scene. Uh, we start, like, like every game, with a cube and a plane. Um, and because it's not even uh, from scratch enough, we will remove the directional light, we will remove the skybox, we will remove the ambient color, and we will remove uh, the background of the camera. Ah, okay, we are, we are really from scratch now. Um, so let's start for the, with the lighting first. So the lighting in a game engine is a bit different than from a, a film one, a ray tracer, where you can send the rays everywhere. Um, in film, you have to render 60 frames per second, so you have to do some tricks. So the, the lighting is composed of different things. So first, um, we have direct lighting, as you can see here. Um, direct lighting. Then we have a shadow pass. So we do the shadows in a second pass. And here you can see directly that there is something not very realistic, is the fact that if I put a red cube here, there is no bounce of the lights, right? So to do this, we need to use a pass tracer, too bad. Um, we were real time and already we are not real time. So uh, to use a pass tracer, you just, um, let's go back there. I will actually put my camera on the, on the right so that you can see. Um, to use uh, the, the, the pass tracing and to bake the light map, you need to select your objects, uh, make them light map static. And then you see that you have some times to compute this. I will bounce the lighting a bit so that everybody can see it. Okay. And this um, lighting is actually, this uh, indirect lighting is actually composed of two things. The real time lighting, so if I turn it off, there is nothing anymore. It's because the point light here, the point light is um, in a real time mode. So if you want to have baked um, light maps, you do this, you wait. That's the only time we will wait during this presentation. Um, and we have our light map, right? They are baked, uh, we can see them here. They are baked into this texture here. Um, so, and because it's not very practical, uh, you know, like if I start to make my, uh, my place here, you see that I don't have much feedback on what I'm doing, right, on this lighting. So that's why we came up with a, with a new backend for the, for, the, for the baking, which is called the progressive light mapper. And here you will see uh, that we have progressive light mapping. Um, if I just duplicate this object here and move it, uh, no, not the plane, uh, this object here, and I move it here, you can see that Oh, that's a big one. Okay. And here, I can iterate on the lighting pretty fast. I can see directly what is the result. I can change the color. And I never stop uh, doing stuff. It's pretty nice. So I go there. Now we have indirect lighting. It's pretty nice. So let's add a character now. We will add uh, Adam. I forgot to say that I do everything with a, with a, with a pad, and it's another big challenge. Um, it's just because I like it. Um, so here we see we have another problem, right? Uh, we put Adam, and it's all black. It's because we baked the lighting, so it's all on the baked light maps. If you want to have also dynamic objects to be lit, you just uh, go to your point light, and you go to the mix mode. So now, we'll see, we have all the static objects which are baked, and all the dynamic ones which are lit. But then we have another problem. You see that the left of Adam should be a kind of red because the light is bouncing on the walls, right? So for this, we have another trick in real-time engine. So we will go there. Uh, okay. Go there on the top. It's called light probes. So light probes, we create one here. So light probe will capture the indirect lighting into some little probes. Uh, no, sorry, wrong button. Uh, it's here. Light probe, here. 
it will capture the lighting into small um, lights. And we see that directly, let's go back to Adam. Okay, here. Let's focus the camera again there. Okay, I use Control Shift F to focus. Um, we see that if I turn it off, that we have uh, the indirect lighting coming com from the light. Um, let's go back up there. We will add some more uh, probes on the top so that we capture the lighting on every part. So we just edit the light. We just uh, select them all with Control A, Control D to duplicate. Uh, I said Control A, Control D. Okay, here. We will have some light probes um, next to this place here. And we will again duplicate and have some more light probes around there. So now if I move the camera under Adam, and I'm moving Adam, if you look to the, to the right, we will see, oh, we'll move Adam. We will see that Adam is being lit by the green and being lit by the white, right? Um, but um, we have another problem. You see, it's not very realistic. On the right, we have these nice highlights, but on the left, we don't have anything on the metal. The metal is not reflecting the wall. It's because we're missing some environment map which are necessary for physical base rendering. So for this, it's very easy. Um, we will just create a reflection probe. Where is my reflection probe? It's here. So the reflection probe captures its environment. And if we look at it, it's beautiful and it's blue. It's because we need to tell it what to render inside, right? We don't want to have Adam inside of it. So let's go there. Let's capture the reflection probe. Um, so now if we look at this and we change the background, not blue but black, we see that we have the environment here which has been baked on this probe on the bottom and we see that we have these nice reflections. Again, we will edit the, uh, the environment, the, the light probe, sorry, the reflection probe again, and we will just duplicate it so that we can uh, capture the different places. I have a problem with Control D today. Uh, okay, here, here, oh, actually I did another one, and here. So now, if I move Adam, we will see that it, it reflects the, the green on the, on the plastron and it reflects the white. And here we have a last problem and we get to the last trick of uh, real-time rendering is the fact that, you know, we really like, what we really like is uh, this high frequency uh, highlights you see on the, on the right. And when we move to this light here, we don't have them. W it's lit, but we don't have this nice highlight here. So to, for that, I will use uh, the, volume, like the volumetric lighting pack and the real-time area lights that we have there. So just take it here. Okay, uh, we'll rotate it. And now we'll put it up there. And see, you see that this nice lighting here? Okay, so we will hide the render source so that we, we think it's coming from this place and we will turn on the shadows. Okay, we're done with the lighting. It's been something like eight minutes. Um, we need now to go to the second step, which is animating the guy. So for this, we will use, uh, of course, we talk about this, we use Timeliner. So it's a big name these days. Um, and we will create a sequence, right? And for this, we, you just go on Window, you see the timeline, you create um, a new timeline. Let's call it this. and. Here, you can just drag and animate whatever you want. So we will start with animating the character. So um, in, when you have a character, it can be generic, so you can exactly play the animation that you had matching your own rig, but you can also retarget the animations to our humanoid rigs uh, so that you can retarget it back to any other uh, character. So uh, in the Adam package, actually Adam is a humanoid, so we are able to, if I look at all the animation clips, we are able to take the Adam walk, for example, here. So Adam is walking. We have a possibility when you select the clip to, to offset it. So we will put it uh, here. So he's walking. And because actually most of the music video, they have people walking along a wall. So it's pretty nice. Um, and, and because it's um, an animation which is looping, I can just repeat it and having walk there. Okay, like this. And then I just want him to do something as I'm walking. Uh, I want him to turn. And it's good because on our um, import package characters, 
uh, we have some different animations, but with the magic of retargeting, I can use uh, its animation on top of Adam. So I go there, and we, we see that he's turning left. But he's not turning at the right position, so I could move it by hand, but we have a very useful thing, which is right-click match offset to previous clip. And now, magically, uh, let's go with a normal view. Okay, here. Uh -huh. So we see the guy here. We'll see that now he's walking, and then he's turning. It's pretty nice. If we play it, we have a small problem. We see he's walking, and then he's turning fast. So we need to slow it down. For this, you just press Shift, and then you can slow down the animation. Uh, I will actually enter. I think he's, he's walking like 30% faster. So here, now let's look. He's walking slow, and then he's walking slow. Now we have another problem, is that we have this little jump in the animation in, the, in, in between. So we will use the magic of blending, and now, okay, he's moving a bit forward, so it's all right, I would just make him walk a bit more. Okay, here, and now he's walking, that's cool. So then when I use this, I can just start combining things. Uh, let's say um, I will have him turn and then walk again here, and then idle maybe, yeah, idle here. And then, uh, oh yeah, I, want, I, I didn't tell, tell you, but I want to make a music video. So I have some, uh, some uh, mocap of dancing, which is pretty nice. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and I will just, because we are in a hurry, uh, I will just uh, match the offset with the previous click, clip and just uh, do this and hope that it works. Okay, here, here, and here. So he's walking, and then he's turning, then he's idling, and then he starts dancing. Very cool. <laughs> it's very cool. Uh, and what is really nice, we know, is if you come from the film industry, is that right now, you know, like I have this plane which is too small. It's not a problem, because I can change it. Everything is dynamic. Um, so I'm done with animation, and we are 13 minutes from the start. Um, so now the next thing is camera work. So I didn't tell, like, I didn't tell you, but you can actually animate anything in timeline. So let's just lock this uh, timeline. So I can drop the camera, for example, here, create an animation track, and then select my camera. And I can say, OK, um, I want my camera to uh, be here at the beginning. No, sorry. I need to enter the recall mode. Then I say the camera is here. And then he's walking, when he's walking here, I just move the camera around here. And then, yeah. So it's, it's cool, but it's impossible that I make a nice camera work in the, in the five minutes that I have now to make this. Um, so that's not the way you, wanted to, you want to do it. And most people at this time usually ask, can you import a camera pass from Maya or something? Uh, and yes, you can, but I think there is something better than this. So timeline, the way we made it is actually um, uh, just an animation graph underneath. And it's pretty go good because you can script it. You can script your own nodes, uh, which are called playables. And based on this, we have made, um, you can make your own clips which are smart. Um, and we've made this camera system called Cinemachine, and we will see how it works, so taking advantage of this. So you just drag your camera on the, um, um, on the timeline, and you just say, I want a Cinemachine track. Now, if you look there, my camera is not stupid anymore. It has a brain. Um, and I want to have three shots for this sequence. The first shot, I will, follow the, I will follow Adam from the front. The second shot, I will be a first person looking at Adam going away. And the third shot, I will have a final shot with a dolly camera going in the, in the sky. And I have 15 minutes. <coughs> so let's do this. Three shots, one, two, yeah, thank you. Um, I'm trying to get some help. Uh, so here we go. Cinemachine. So the first one until he turns. Um, the second one until he starts dancing. And the third one uh, until the end. OK. So first shot. Uh, each shot will be a virtual camera. It will be my cameraman. So I create this virtual camera. And I want to follow Adam. It's cool because there is a follow uh, box and I will fill it up. I want to follow Adam. 
Nice. So now you have my camera. My camera is following Adam. It's cool. Um, and it's following it 10, mac 10 meters from the back. Um, and now it's two meters in the front. My cameraman is a bit stupid because he's looking in the front. But it's my fault because I didn't told you to look at Adam. So let's say I want to look at Adam head. Now it's looking at Adam head. And now I'm changing my cameraman to have not a dwarf, but like a normal, normal size. And I, sorry, I use normal, but um, it's good. So now we have our first shot with, uh, with this camera following Adam. It's pretty cool. So second shot, I want to place my camera here on the side, kind of like a spectator looking at Adam. So for this, I just uh, select my second shot, create my virtual camera, uh, select it, and Control shift f to align with, uh, with, my, uh, with my scene view. So I have my second shot. And my second shot, I want different things. One, I want to feel it human. So we have a module called the noise module. And we have some default presets. You can do your own. But one is like wide angle mute. And now you see that it's, it has, it's kind of moving around, blobbing around like fits. Um, the second thing I want to do is still also watch Adam, like look at his uh, head. But I want to, like in my scenario, normal, normally there is a guard here. So I want to sneak him from the back. So I don't want to look him straight in front. So what I will do is just like, I will change the composition of this shot so that when he's arriving, it feels like he's moving and then I turn my head and see and look at him. It's pretty cool. And then I will do my last shot, which is a dolly track shot. So for this, I go to the Cinemachine menu and I will create a dolly track. I select my last shot. I just drag the camera, which was newly created. And I go there, get here. Nice, OK. And I take my track. And I will just create three uh, points for my track here. And I will move them around. So the first one is going there. And the second one is going, let's say, here. And because a lot of movie, they end up like finishing up there. I was just moving up. Right. It's pretty nice. Um, so now I have my, my track. Um, again, I have a, a cameraman on this dolly. So I will tell him to watch Adam. Always watch Adam's head. Uh, I will change the composition a bit. And now this parameter here that you see on the bottom right is a past position, is controlling where I am on the, on the dolly track. So I will use uh, the fact that Cinemachine can animate anything. So I just drag and drop the, camera, the virtual camera three, create an animation track. I go to the beginning of my shot, press the record button, select it, and I say that at the beginning, I just, something really nice now, you can just choose what you want to animate. So I just add a key here, because it was good where it was. And then I finish it here. And I want to be on the second uh, point at the end. So now we have this nice shot. And something that I don't like is the fact that when I finish, my, my composition was not very matching what uh, I needed at the beginning. But it's all right, because I can uh, animate it also. So for example, I want to start here. And I want to finish uh, here. OK, and now I have a dolly, which is following and matching my composition instruction. So we, are, we have 11 minutes remaining, and we have already a kind of, um, of a clip. Let's uh, watch how it looks like. So here we have one problem that I need to fix. We have aliasing, and, and if you make a film, nobody will accept that. Um, the colors are not fantastic. Uh, we need some color grading on top of this. And uh, yeah, it's dancing. But it's, it's pretty all right. Like, the lighting is good. A lot of things are, are pretty OK. So let's go to the, to the makeup of filmmaking, which is called post-processing. Um, we introduced last year the post-processing stack. And there, we have a new version coming, version 2. And I will show you how it works. The problem with the past processing stack is the fact that you couldn't blend between them. And in, if you make a movie, you want to have like a default one and just, just override some values depending on the shots. So our new system is on two components. The first one um, is uh, the layer, which is in charge of applying all the post-processing uh, 
making the, the weight, the blend of all the, the, the effects and apply it to the camera. So the first thing that you don't need to blend is uh, temporal anti-aliasing. I, I turn this on. And then the second part of, um, of this is uh, the, um, uh, let's say global fast, is the uh, volume. So the volume is just a, it can be global or it can be an actual volume that you can trigger. And here you can create a profile. So you can create a new profile and you can just add all the post effect from here. But I don't have time, so I've prepared my own stack, empty stack, which is uh, here. Uh, my default post empty here. And if I turn something on, let's go to a place where you can see some effects of the post processing, like here. Um, if I go there, uh, here, okay. If I go there and turn it on, it doesn't work. It's because we need to have a layer to specify um, what to trigger. So I don't go too much into details, but you just select a layer and put your global volume into the same layer and magically um, it should work. Okay, now it works. So let's turn on ambient occlusion. It gives some realism here. Let's turn on the bloom. Uh, I will crank it up because we're in a music video, it has to be shiny. Uh, and we also have some dirt, lens dirtiness that I would put very high because it's very low budget uh, music video, you cannot clean your lens. Um, and we will do color grading. So we have this ACES uh, color grading which takes like all the HDR range and keep, keep the black uh, very uh, nice to get uh, some range for the colors. Uh, I want to make this a bit warmer. Uh, I want to desaturate, no, saturate. Uh, okay, saturate a bit the colors. Uh, I want to turn it a bit to the blue. Yeah, it's nice. Um, then I will put some grain, but not too much. Uh, some motion blur to have this camera feeling. Uh, some vignetting, not too much again. And some screen space reflections to have the nice reflections. So uh, the, these screen space reflections are actually the new one, which are a lot performance. The one before were costing a, a really a lot, but now you can really count on it even uh, like on, on any PC and console platform. Uh, and here we are, we have a very nice, um, we have a really better looking uh, demo now, I think, let's watch. So no more anti-aliasing, better colors. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I have seven more minutes, okay. Um, so it's a music video, so um, we need to add some music, right? So uh, in the, we have a, I really like this, this song. Uh, can we call it a song? No. Uh, where it is, audio clip. Um, this musician is fantastic, called Chopin. Um, <laughs> and I have a small problem, is that, because I was, originally I had a, a Jay-Z song or something like that, uh, but then I thought Chopin was good. Do we have sound? So it's good, but I have a problem. It's like why this guy is dancing hip hop on top of a Chopin song, right? Uh, so I found a trick. Uh, let's see. I found a trick. So if I go there, okay. I, there is a new, uh, you can see the audio waves now in, in 2017. So you see like here, there is this note that we can really see clearly this piano nut that I will use as a, as a place where I can I just download it like a, a, like a beat. <laughs> and, um, and I use it just to synchronize it somehow. <laughs> so you see, it's quite funny actually. Um, so we have this Adam music video. So, okay, now it makes sense. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I also like, I really love like what, um, what Neil has done. So I took some samples of it, uh, Consortium Criminal Code, uh, and I will just put them here, but because we don't have much time, I will put there anywhere, and we will see what it does in the end. I will put it twice because that's the way it's made usually. 
Um, and what I want also, I have this drone music like doing at the end. Uh, so I will put it exactly while uh, I think it fits pretty well with, the, with this dolly track at, in the end. Uh, it's here, up, sorry. Ah, oh yeah, you cannot scale from the beginning. And you can, in here in the base duration, base in duration, you can have it um, ease in. And I will ease out also. And I will loop it so that it uh, repeats. And the same for the, for the beat, I will repeat until the end. So, okay, it's cool. Um, and I have four more minutes, so I can do something. Uh, in any music video, you need fire, I think. Um, so, so that it really, really makes sense. Um, so I took the, the default, uh, the, the samples, uh, uh, BFX that we have on the, on the store, uh, and I really like the flame thrower. Uh, let's look. I will put, what is really nice is like you can position objects looking if they fit well on the, on the shot. So I will put it, let's say, here, okay. Uh, we'll rotate it up there. And I just want this uh, flamethrower to arrive when the drone music is arriving and when we start, you know, so that it's really epic. Um, so, and you, you know, we have a problem. It's like particles are kind of real time, right? So I cannot really see if it's gonna work or not. Um, so, and I cannot really, without coding, do this. But in a timeline, we have control tracks, which are able to control anything. So I would just add my control track and I would just say, during this time, uh, control track, can you, can you control these things? So now, now I have the fire on in the end. Okay, it's cool. Um, but now it's not really a music video. I have three more minutes because a music video never starts like this, right? Like plain thing. You need to have some kind of black screen at the beginning and black screen and credits. So I have. Two minutes fifty. Oh, maybe I will make it. Um, so uh, you know, like here, it will be a pain, like selecting everything and putting to the right and then putting my stuff. What would be very good is if we have nonlinear editing, right? That would be cool if I just take this sequence as one big sequence, and it's possible. Um, so I will do this. I call it a final cut. Uh, here, final cut, and I will unlock this. I will create a final cut. No, uh, everything was going well until now. Uh, okay, here, and in this final cut, I will add, again, a control track. And this control track is quite nice because, again, it can control anything, including other sequences. So I just drag and drop, I will lock it down. I will drag and drop uh, the sequence here, and now, I'm able to control the, the other sequence from here. Now, we have another problem, um, is the fact that in a game, in a, vid in a game engine, what is a title and what is a black screen, right? Like it's, it doesn't, you could choose whatever you want. Um, so because you can do your own track, we created some playables, uh, so that uh, we made some examples open source uh, where we do this with UI, and I show you how to do this, and it's in uh, the asset store, it's called the default, the default playables. Um, so automatically, when you drag this package here, you have a screen fader track and a text switcher. So screen fader is based on the UI. So I will put the UI here. I will put an image. I'll put the image full screen. I will make it black. I will make it transparent by default so that it's not always here. I just drag it here. And if I, each time I create a clip, it's gonna be black. So I put one at the beginning and one at the end, a mm, uh, bit more of it. Okay, here, oh yeah, I really wanna see the end of this. Okay, uh, even more. Okay, I think it's good. And if I create another clip, if I duplicate this, and I make it uh, an alpha to zero, and I overlay, they will blend automatically, so it's kind of fade out. And then I do another one here, and it's fading in, fading out. Nice. A bit uh, sooner, because it's not what I want. Okay, here, here. Now, yeah, cool. So fade in, fade out. And for the text, it's the same principle. Uh, I would just add uh, text here. 
and make it full screen, make it white, uh, put it in the middle, and by default, put nothing and transparent. Okay, then I move this text here. And now each time I had a text switcher, yeah, I will just put Adam music video. And if I move there, I have Adam music video. Very nice. I will uh, make it a bit longer. Okay, and I will make my own credit. Okay, here, uh, by Mathieu. Okay, cool. So, I think we have it, and we have 50 seconds left, it's great. Uh, so let's watch it. Thank you. And I want just to finish on one thing. Um, we have a new recorder also, and it's pretty cool because we made a, a playable again to record, which is quite unique. Uh, I just put it here, and I can decide to record this sequence. And we know in film also that sometimes you just want to record a small piece of sequence. And I just say that I want to record it uh, as a movie, and I want to capture the UI. Okay. And now if I play, it will record it. Um, yeah, so it's, it's playing slightly slowly but close to real time and doesn't play the, the sound. So uh, thanks a lot. Uh, we'll let record it. So I just sum up uh, what I used. Um, I used 2017.3, but you can use 2017.1. The so reason I used .3 is because we have recording built in uh, the engine with the sound. Um, and uh, I use a Cinemachine. A timeline, Cinemachine, uh, the VFX sample on the Asset Store, um, the recorder, which is on GitHub, and I will show you a slide. Actually, I can show you it now, uh, here. And if you want to take a picture. And yeah. And most of these things, uh, Cinemachine, uh, Particle Pack, uh, uh, post-processing default playables and the recorder are open source so you can also play around with them and we have the github which is public so you can just get the latest version anytime um, thanks a lot again and uh, maybe I show you the, the recording if it's when it's finished actually I can show you now I never want to finish this talk I'm so happy to have done it on time um, so here we go and you see in assets uh, in the projects and recordings. Actually, you can ex export it as an image sequence, but we have the music which is recorded. Oh, fantastic. Okay, thanks a lot. Have a good day. Thank you.